In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use the crop and eraser tools to quickly remove areas of objects, images, or entire designs. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. The simplest use for the crop tool is for trimming images. I have this imported bitmap image that I want to trim, so I'll find and activate the crop tool on the toolbox. Dragging the cursor defines the area I want to keep, which is called the cropping area, and anything outside this area will be removed. The position and size of the cropping area are listed in the property bar, and I can drag in the workspace to move the cropping area, or drag side or corner nodes. If I want to remove the cropping area, I can click the red X to clear, or press the escape key. When I'm happy with the size and position of the cropping area, I can click the green crop checkmark, or double click inside the cropping area to complete the crop. If I need a specific size, such as a 2 inch by 2 inch section of this image, I can start the crop, then specify the crop dimensions in the property bar, drag the cropping area to the part I want to keep, and apply. In this example, Let's say I need only the top view of the shoe and nothing else. I'll create the cropping area, but because I have a bit of the side view in here as well, I want to rotate the crop rectangle a bit. When I click again inside the cropping area, the corner handles can be used for rotation. Clicking again brings back the original nodes. To complete the crop, I'll click the crop button to apply, and now all other objects are removed. If I want to crop just one object in a drawing, I need to select that object before cropping. In this example, I'll activate the Pick tool and select just the image. Then I'll use Crop to trim the image, and all unselected objects remain intact. If the image hadn't been selected in advance, then everything in the drawing, except for what was inside the cropping area, would have been removed. The Crop tool isn't just for images. In this example, there are ellipses, curves, and lines. If I crop all but the center, the objects that remain are trimmed accordingly. Clicking the small arrow at the lower right corner of the crop icon opens the Tool Group flyout, where I can find the Eraser tool. The eraser can also be activated by pressing the X shortcut key. The main reason to use the eraser instead of crop is when you want to remove an area that doesn't have a rectangular shape. This tool works just like a pencil eraser, with either a round or square nib. I can change the nib size by entering a new diameter, or by holding the shift key while I drag the cursor up or down. When I drag my cursor around the image, everything in the cursor's path is erased. Another way to use the eraser is to click two endpoints of a straight line to erase the path of the entire line. After clicking the first point, I can hold the Control key, or Option, on the Mac to constrain the line to specific angles, then click the second point. The peach-colored curves are now trimmed where the eraser passed through, and all paths are now closed. This means that each curve starts and ends at another curve, no curves are left open-ended. As with the Crop tool, if I want to trim only specific objects, I need to select the objects in advance. With just the group of curves selected with the Pick tool, I can now press X to start the eraser, and click twice to erase curves only. For stylus users, the Pressure, Tilt, and Bearing options in the property bar can be adjusted to control size, flatness, and rotation of the eraser nib. I can also enable Reduce Nodes, which results in erasure curves with fewer nodes. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the Crop and Eraser tools in Corel Draw. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also view a written version of this tutorial.